Hello and welcome to my next video on lipids or lipids. I'll be saying lipids. Firstly, I apologise for the poor quality of the writing in this. My pen has just died. Yay. And it'll be unlikely that I will be able to get a, another one soon. Maybe in a bit of time, maybe, but it might mean you have to wait a few days for a video. Or I'll do one on PowerPoint if you want. Um, if you do, leave a comment, say, as per usual. But currently, I just want to say, yeah, my channel's going great. I'm two days, nearly got 100, 100 uh, views, four subscribers. I, yeah, great, keep it going. So, lipids. They make up 5% of the organic matter of a cell, usually as either little globules of fat or in the phospholipid bilayer in cell membranes. They act as an energy source and store. They're found in membranes. They also work for insulation, protection, and are in some hormones, particularly testosterone, estrogen, steroid hormones, those sort of ones. Right, a lot of drawings in this one because lipid is a really simple topic. You know, not much in the textbook. It's only a few sort of questions they can really ask. And yeah, it's not much. So make sure you get this right. This is a glycerol molecule. It's the one on the left. Three carbons, three OH groups, and a fatty acid. This has a carboxyl group on the end and then a hydrocarbon chain. If you look at the next one, this is how they bond. They form, so far we've had proteins which form a peptide bond, and this is an ester bond formed again in a condensation reaction, so water is released and the bond is formed, covalent again. In this case, I've done triglyceride. Three OH groups bond to three fatty acids. Triglyceride. Also, this is saturated. That means there are no double bonds between carbon or hydrogen. There's one between a carbon and an oxygen, but that's not. That doesn't matter. Saturated just means that all all the carbons have the maximum number of oxygens attached to them. If you look on the third fatty acid. Tail. I've done in brackets another one with an extra line on that indicates a double bond. This makes it unsaturated because not all hydrogens have bonded to a carbon. In this case, a carbon has formed two bonds with another carbon. This could means that unsaturated have a little kink in them. That's due to the double bond. This kink makes the molecule a bit bigger, so less compact. So you get less of them, which makes unsaturated fats better for you than saturated. Right, here you've got some tiny pictures. That's a triglyceride at the top. It's hydrophobic. It will not mix with water. It's insoluble. This means it does not affect the osmotic potential of the cell. So it won't mean that if you get loads of these, water won't leave the cell. I mean, enter. Enter. Leave. Enter, probably. Um. <laughs> yeah, enter. Sorry. Mind blank there. We will have them. Next one is a phospholipid or lipid. It has a hydrophilic head but still hydrophobic tails. The main difference, it's got one glycerol, two fatty acids, that's one less, so one less ester bond, and a phosphate group which is hydrophilic. This means that that um, phospholipids can form two layers with fatty acids pointing inwards and phospho phosphate groups facing outwards. Outwards into the water because they're hydrophilic. It inwards because they're hydrophobic and going that's the little phosphate group there as you see at the very far left there's a little dash that's because there can be variable groups on the phosphate and that's particularly the bit that gives it the charge this is a cholesterol molecule four carbon rings an oh group and a carbon chain or hydrocarbon chain this is soluble in water and it's very small and thin and compact and here are the functions of lipids triglycerides energy stores and fat globules this this can be good for insulating but obviously too many and you become obese um because fats actually will release about twice the amount of energy as carbohydrates do so they're very good as energy releases and they're always the first ones to be re released i think um <laughs> phospholipids cell membrane and cell signaling because phospholipids the phosphate group can attach to a carbohydrate and that makes a kind of glyco, in this case, a glycoprotein 
if you remember, or glycolipid, both, both, yeah, it's glycolipid. Well, glycoproteins have the same principle. Well, this is a glycolipid, obviously. And these can attach to other molecules or have hormones attached to them and act in cell signaling. Cholesterol. This can be used in cell membrane fluidity. It's very thin and soluble in water, so it's going to go into the hydrophobic area. So it can just slip in between them and mean that the um, phospholipid bilayer can't move around as much. That's from unit one. It also is part of the steroid hormone. And vitamin D is also made up of um, cholesterol. Since they are small, and the, the fact they are lipid, they can pass through the phospholipid bilayer, and they can also go through the nucleus, So, because they are quite small. Now, cholesterol is vital to living organisms, so many cells can make it, but excess cholesterol is bad. It can form lumps called gallstones in bile, and it can also be deposited in blood vessels causing atherosclerosis, which you'll learn about later. Now, also, lipids in respiration. Lipids, as I said, can be used as energy. They can be respired in a hydrolysis reaction that breaks the ester bonds, releasing energy. So, yet again, water is added, and this produces ATP molecules. Now, question. I say, I'm going through this very quickly. You know, eight minutes long, probably, this video will be. So, question. Describe how the structure of a phospholipid differs from that of a triglyceride three marks i'll let you pause here this is the most common question you'll get on this but i'll let you pause good very simple answer phospholipids have one less fatty acid and ester bond have a phosphate group and a hydrophilic head very very simple and also no conclusion today because my pen died <laughs> very simple i say short little video i decided to do it's quite late now and it yeah anyway i hope these are helping i say we're getting a few subscribers it's going well please leave comments um more likes likes would be really appreciated so i make sure i know i'm doing well because uh so far two likes i'm amazed by two likes to be honest but still only two would like some more um and yeah if you can pass me on to friends or anything to get people to come view me that'd be great you know as i say 100 views in two days is just amazing what would be awesome let's see you know you, you see people like, you know, 100,000 subscribers special, 1 million subscribers special. Um, I'm not, I won't do specials, but um, let's, see, let's see if we can get up to 10 subscribers by, yeah, by Sunday. Go on. This is, um, today is Thursday, in case you're not watching it today. Today's Thursday. We've got four subscribers. Let's see if we can get 10 by Sunday. That'd be awesome. So, yeah. Have, yeah, thanks for listening and any questions usual email me post comments any what you want me to do next um i'm probably going to do evolution when i can quite soon and then also move on to nucleic acids because they're pretty easy to do and biological tests that will complete all of biological molecules that little unit and then i've got to do nucleic acids and enzymes but yeah just i'll, I'll, I'll get it all done eventually just make sure you tell me which order you want me to do it in because obviously exams in two months today i think yeah two months today so um you know the quicker i get the bits you need rather than the bits you don't need out the better so yeah thanks for listening and oh i managed to make it up to nine minutes so yeah bye right. thank you goodbye also very quick shout out to otravine i hope i said that right he's been um giving me lots of advice and tips on these videos been watching them introducing a few more people to them and asked for a shout out so yeah thanks and you got me over nine minutes so well done